us. Ooh, ah, I got a show that'll piss you off. <laughs> Butchie the Demon Slayer. Oh, joy. That's what I love to see. Happiness spread. A job well done. <laughs> well, could be worse. Could be Alien vs. Predator 2. Well, for, funny story for that one, but uh, that's a story for another time. Witchy the Demon Slayer, or a better translation from the original Korean, Witchy the Taoist Wizard, is a 2009 fantasy movie based on the story of a 14th or 15th century Taoist scholar called Witchy, who according to legend received magical powers from a nine-tailed alcoholic fox that he captured. That doesn't happen in the film though, he just has powers. According to another legend, he gets his powers by fucking a magic fox in the shape of a woman, and then she vomited her magic marble in his mouth and he swallowed it. What does the fox say? Vomit gore is hot. This also doesn't happen in the film. The real witch, he was a bit of a heretic who enjoyed causing all kinds of havoc, eventually being arrested and executed. Of course, when his tomb was opened a short while later, his body was missing because he can't keep a good trickster archetype down. Surprise! This also doesn't happen in the film unless you call being imprisoned in a magic painting for 500 years, being executed, and having your body go missing. Which you don't. Spoil sport. Hush! Anyway, this film, which was the third highest grossing in South Korea in 2009, has apparently borrowed the name and not a huge amount else from the legend of Wuchi. And it opens with an unusually excitable eye dand. <laughs> They look like DreamWorks seeking missiles. It's followed closely by most of the other items in the fucking world. In a way, writing. I really hope these are credits and not something important to need for context because I'm not skimming Wikipedia again. They're living in peace, I might call them beasts. Racist. What? Dark and heavenly? Isn't that level of paradox a little extreme for goblins? I mean, they're goblins. A shoebox would suffice. But no, if I stopped talking shit and actually paid attention, I'd have realized that these goblins are mighty warriors, have strange powers, are human sized, and can shift between their human shape and that of a giant animal. That's not a goblin, that's a bloody roar character. Anyway, the goblins were imprisoned when the mighty arch god took time off from being off screen in Prince of Darkness to blow a pipe and imprison them for 3,000 days. Couldn't he just blow the pipe again, lock him up for another 3,000? Anyway, no, because three figuratively blind idiot gods opened the doors early, releasing a plague of evil furries onto the world. They're like regular furries, but less into hugs, probably. So the goblins stole the archgod's pipe and he was consumed by evil and fell to earth and stuff. Let's hope they don't try to treat the archgod being evil as some kind of dramatic twist exactly this many minutes into the film. Well, that about wraps it up for God. Anyway, centuries later, the lesser gods, the intern gods, the promoted beyond their level of expertise gods, are still around and living in Korea. My favourite one is Moonlighting as a Christian priest, and the other two are a fortune teller and wasting a doctor's time. Of course, he might just be Kanye West in disguise. I just told you who I thought I was! A god! I just told you! That's who I think I am! This all leads to an extensive flashback. This must be some kind of a record. We had a prologue set in the past, then we have two minutes in the present, and then we're back in the past. It's like the film is dementia. Anyway, flashback. This guy hanging out with the gods is Witchy's master, and he sent all these guys out to go get him. 
He's been partying and causing trouble like the good trickster he is. Can't say I'm too surprised. Their hats aren't even waterproof. No wonder they can't stop an actual wizard. Anyway, that night, these guys are discussing the goblins and their pipe and all that crap. And I gotta say, maybe they're overreacting to everything? I mean, literally no one but these guys have noticed the cast of Bucky O'Hare running around. Yeah, you. Yeah. The people who run rooftops in the middle of the day are Assassin's Creed players. Much more dangerous. We are assassins. Yes, we are assassins. What a sec. You're asking one of your buddies if the guy who's been running on rooftops in the middle of the night is a goblin because only goblins run on rooftops in the middle of the night? When your other buddy is running on the rooftops in the middle of the night. How do you do, fellow not goblins? What? You get You get Okay, so it was a goblin. Lucky guess. Anyway, a second after it's killed, another arrow flies the other way. Turns out that Witch the Demon Slayer was also hunting the goblin from the other direction. I think. The scene's not very clear. Good thing they'll return to it later on. Anyway, I want to know what fucking idiot translated animal-based demon things as goblins. The one mythical creature that even shit gods aren't scared of. When the film's title was translated to Witchy the Demon Slayer. So, in what might be a flashback, inside the flashback, this time to Korean gods of Egypt, the Prince of the Heavens has come to visit this castle slash town slash mansion. <laughs> and as we all know, nothing's more respectful than wearing your best and fucking the floor with reverence. <laughs> Prince Ali, fabulous he, Ali Ababwa. Can you flex, show some respect down the money? Don't know what everyone's complaining about. I think the live action Aladdin looks fucking awesome. This jackass bothering ancient Korean Sailor Moon stealing stuff and breaking other stuff <laughs> is Wuche. Unlike Neil Buchanan, one of his many powers, apparently, is to create things for the magic of art attack. <laughs> Don't be absurd, it symbolizes the solitude of horse. And anyway, we having done his wizardly duty by fucking with the king, which he reveals his identity via his unofficial theme song. A highly unmiserable pile of magical secrets. No one liked your game, Joanne. But what about Woochie? He's the Tom Baker of wizards, he wears a hat and a scarf, causes trouble, drinks heavily on the job, fucks over the powerful, and is capable of leaving with the aid of special effects. <laughs> Here's Taranji, Woochie's dog's body. See, that's funny because he's a dog who Woochie turned into a man and enslaved with a promise letting him stay human forever. In a bit of a come down from pretending to be a god, which he's now pretending not to be himself. <laughs> Something similar happened to my level of fame when I left Channel Awesome. Anyway, some guys still know who he is and have come to capture him. Of course, these might be the guys from earlier. <laughs> Apparently, captions telling us exactly when shit is happening is one form of magic that doesn't exist in this world. <laughs> Uh, take that, random bystander. <laughs> After paying for damages, because he's not a total bastard in this scene, <laughs> Wuchi and his horse body run off to the next scene. <laughs> Just not a heavy one. He's joined up with the entourage guarding a wealthy widow because... I, I don't know. But it's a good way to meet exciting new action scenes. And even shite action scenes that they ignore in favor of Witchy attempting to seduce the widow. Someone like him? Oh, you poor bitch. Oh, wait, I really shouldn't be that insulting. Sorry, Taranji. You know, Woochie dresses like a cross between a Hogwarts student and the Witchfinder General, which is great because it saves me from having to think of a JK Rowling joke. Anyway, after all the usual greetings, 
And players and trees. They just skipped to the kidnapping. <laughs> Not rare enough. <laughs> this part of the plot is to get a magic dagger, which his morals are as flexible as power level. And to demonstrate that, this guy wanted the widow in exchange for the dagger, so would she kidnapped her and then swapped her for this other woman who earlier tried to kill her, and is now getting his ass that took down a whole gang of guards beaten by a single old man. <laughs> Why did you grab a sword? You're a sorcerer. That's just killing him the hard way. Please disperse. Nothing to see here, please. So while getting his head kicked in, would she grab the goblin imprisoning pipe from the prologue? Not because it'd be useful and because he's clever, nah, he somehow mistook it for the bronze knife. Anyway, fight scene! Glitter taught them to be ninja teens! This is a radical rap! In a change far more impressive than any mere leap from a man to a beast, would she will become a man capable of basic competence! <laughs> I kinda love how gravity only exists on the sides of walls. Still, he's wasting a bunch of magic floating around when he could be magic missling that fuck. The best thing about the goblin's design with the anti-gravity cape is that it means the terrible animation gravity physics are the exact same thing as a deliberate stylistic choice. Which is just clever. <laughs> 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 Stone. This fight keeps on going and going and going and going. You're talking, you John. This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. Alas, my fantastically clever use of the Bloody War 2 theme, cause there's two of them, was cut short by the end of this flashback instead of flashback, inside the ramblings of an aging incompetent lesser god. Anyway, in the morning, Witchy's master goes to see him. Magic is created in a computer by men from the future. What's a computer? It's like an abacus that you can paint with. Hey, if magic is an illusion, then why the fuck is he a human right now? How can he speak and throw guys and get turned into a horse and carry witchy for long distances? Anyway, we finally get some proper context for the last, holy fuck, 25 minutes of film. Witchy wanted a magic knife and a mirror to become the most powerful wizard, so I made a deal with that rat to swap them for the widow, and then they both double crossed each other. Because being a dirty rat's not purely a physical classification. If peas aren't dull, they've gone terribly wrong! Good of him to recount the plot again, it's finally starting to make sense. No, wait, sorry, that's just familiarity. You're Wuchi the Simple! Wuchi the Fool! Wuchi the Dog Tamer! <laughs> anyway, the Arch God, all consumed by evil and fallen to Earth, has arrived with some very Eastern Orthodox patriarchs. Nah, it's the lesser gods, who literally saw the Arch God consumed by evil and fallen to Earth, and are still gonna be surprised when he turns out to be evil. Nah, that's the other fool. <laughs> <laughs> Life's a bitch. Now so are you. Oh, what she takes the term dog's body very seriously. At least he takes something seriously. I've gotta confess, I'm a little underwhelmed, but they probably put all the imagination to the choice of location. <laughs> That's a very impractical type of magic. Smudge the writing or fold it the wrong way and it could turn your hand into anything. 
actually, I'm going to assume that's what happened. There was a typo. And it was originally written to give him a bigger cock. Anyway, the Arch God wants that goblin pipe, and he's willing to witch smack a wizard to get at. <laughs> so, Wuchi, he's the worst. Oh, yes, the worst. He got beaten up by a rat. Oh, I hear he works a servant like a dog. No, he is one. Oh. I guess that's all right then. <laughs> and being a wizard, he can put up a magic shield anytime he wants. <laughs> Not a true wizard is someone who has magic powers and stuff. What he does with them is immaterial because he can evaporate shit with his mind. So they discuss the very real possibility that there's a goblin among the wizards. Let me guess, could it be the guy who was consumed by evil and fell to earth? But apart from that, how can none of you, a collection of gods, greater gods, and high level fucking wizards, not have developed to detect goblin spell? When they are shape shifting arch enemies! The only acceptable twist would be if they were all fucking goblins! Anyway, after the bloodletting, they break the pipe in half, so the goblins can't get it, and... <laughs> I'm really not sure what. All it does is imprison the goblins, and they weren't doing anything with it before which he stole it. Oh, now they can't get it back. Anyway, now they have a half pipe each. Hopefully one of them will invent the magic of skateboarding. But nah, that's a mite too radical for this film. <laughs> anyway, after a quick cameo from Rincewind's luggage... <laughs> We get to the important stuff. Staring at that rich widow as she sleeps. <laughs> anyway, Witchy's master is old fashioned, so frowns and kidnapping rich widows, who are wanted by goblins for unclear reasons of plot, and so tells him to take her home. Oh shit, he turned Witchy into horse's punishment. You know, when people say golden hour, they usually mean natural lighting, not piss. It's called a restraining order. As in, I order you to keep away, and if you don't, I'll chain you to the fucking moon. He's trying to tell you nicely that he'll kill you if you keep bothering her. So the totally not evil arch god is suddenly bleeding green blood. Which means the goblins have access to blood dying magic. <laughs> Which is fine, but you think the guys obsessed with fighting them would know that? <laughs> anyway, what's weird is he doesn't understand why his blood is green. <laughs> Which indicates that he's either a goblin sleeper agent or at some point was turned into a goblin because he's evil. That's all well and good, but his little trained minions can't take the chance that he's actually a renegade Vulcan, here to ruin their careers by telling everyone that magic doesn't really exist. So they immediately leap to murder. <laughs> and then, of course, the feelings just mutual. <laughs> You sound weirdly surprised. Now this and the shark from the green blood make it look like he's possessed or something. But nah, if that's what happened, they forgot to tell the subtitles about it. He's just evil now and he's not sure why, but he goes along with it because the film needs a villain. Anyway, two minutes after being told to keep away from the widow, Woochie's decided not to. <laughs> Hashtag, woman won't Woochie. Naturally, when Woochie's trying to be charming, the conversation turns to his prospective love interest nonchalance about death. Dying would at least be exciting, especially if fire was involved. Sounds like something Jack Cousteau would write in his blue period. So she's never seen the ocean, which seems unlikely to me as she can afford to travel and there's a lot of water near Korea. Fortunately though, which she's gonna take her. Well? Very impressive, Woochie, but which ocean? It was just the middle of the night. 
Oh, talk of Tannen. A place called England, but we don't talk about it. It's full of disappointment and turfs. Anyway, this was a short-lived distraction. Much like her, if she gets her wish. Why not just wish to be? It's just my voiceover. Anyway, why not just wish to be reborn as someone rich enough to do what the fuck they want? Who then does what the fuck they want? Anyway, now that he's realized he's evil, the arch godlin really needs that pipe. <laughs> oh, shit, I forgot to lose this fight. <laughs> So now he's been struck down, he's going to become much more powerful than he can possibly imagine. And being the arch god, he can probably imagine a lot. Anyway, would she and the widow have made it to her place and her retinue aren't happy with her choice of suitor? But then again, neither was she until he made her way out. Give it up! Would you the scoundrel? Would you the misanthrope? Would you the titular? You know, they skipped over a whole action scene, but I'm not complaining though, the film is really long. And for something this hyperactive, almost nothing happens in it. Anyway, the three lesser gods happened upon Witchy's master's pile of clothes and concluded that he murdered him. Hmm? Why has Jimmy killed him? He just vanished and left his clothes behind. Witchy could have just stripped him, raped him, and be slowly flaying him alive. Oh wait, that's worse. Just go back to assuming you killed him. But you see, this is all part of the Arch God's plan to get the other half of the pipe back. So they seal Wuchi, Chiranji, and this random cat inside paintings for about 500 years to think about what they've done. In this case, steal the pipe back at the last second. That's an excellent point. If the goblins can't get released, more released, without the pipe, then why didn't you seal it away? To be fair, everyone in this is either incompetent or a goblin sleeper agent, so if they tried, they'd probably just release something worse. Like kobolds. Finally, about 500 years later in universe, in the film and in my review, the incompetent lesser god finishes the story he was telling to no one in particular. Because the doctor stopped paying attention about the time Wuchi arrived riding in a cloud. Here's another of the lesser gods working as a fortune teller. <laughs> Bad cuckolded wife. <laughs> Bad. Things aren't going well, you can tell, because his mural's mascara starts running. Over at the local church, the third lesser gods become a Christian priest. Religious fusion taken to a whole new level, but also kind of a fun dramatization of the assimilation of Christianity into Korean culture. In a way, where was I? Oh yeah, South Korean doctors have made amazing advancements in the field of beating people back to health. <laughs> Puny lesser gods. <laughs> What's Korean for my neck, my back, my neck and my back? Anyway, with the goblins back, they need some help. They've lost contact with the arch god, so that leaves just one man and his dog. <laughs> What I don't understand about the Lesser God's flashback earlier is that it was apparently a story being told to the Doctor, slash Rabbit Goblin, but it included facts like the Arch God being evil and Wuchi being innocent, and yet in the present day the Lesser Gods still think Wuchi is evil. <laughs> and will doubtless be shocked to find out it's the Arch God that's evil. According to Zen Buddhism, one visits a temple in the hope of shanking Buddha on the road there. I'm kind of wondering how the fuck Curly, Larry, and Neo managed to break into the museum to do this, but I kind of think that finding out would just add more minutes to the review. This is acceptable comedy. Oh, yeah. oh no! Unfortunately, their plan hits a snag when Wuchi decides that he could give a fuck about the goblins, but it'd be too much effort to do so. Anyway, I do not understand in what 
probably badly translated deranged cosmology, is a lower wizard more powerful than three literal gods? Actually, it's worse than that. This cosmology is based on paper, rock, scissors. Witchy defeats goblins. Goblins defeat gods. Gods defeat witchy. Maybe all this is accurate to Taoism, but based on how accurate witchy isn't to the real man, I'm guessing not. Why can the arch god die when the regular gods are immortal? Fuck it. I don't want to know. I've got more important things to do. Like watch Woodshe get his ass handed to him by the goblins. Okay, if Woodshe's gonna fight the goblins, he needs help. Like the ability to fight the goblins, because I know he just woke up and he doesn't know what a car is, but this is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> this is also a cover version of the medieval weapon super people leaping from car to car, guy with a mad hand, in sale at night action scene in Black Panther. <laughs> but just to avoid copyright issues, this came in almost a decade beforehand. The help he really needs is his canine stress ball Chiranji. Unfortunately, the painting he was in was sold to some guy downtown. So far downtown that there's no cars and more importantly no witnesses to whatever violent nonsense is coming. <laughs> Maybe you get lucky and Chiranji only counts as two thirds of a human being. <laughs> Okay, that's much funnier than my dumb ass and kind of problematic sounding joke. That's what I like about this film, little flashes of authentic cleverness in a dark sea of confusing crap and over a long... I really don't understand why Wuchi is so freaked out by large concrete buildings. He's been in palaces and seen mountains. Hell, he lives in a magical dimension called Pandora. His tolerance for unusually large and stony things really should be higher. Look, he's so freaked out he's forgotten how to punch evil reverse furries in human sets. You might be wondering why releasing Taranji will be a game changer for the fight, seeing as he generally was only kept around to be a work dog and for which you feel superior to. <laughs> Oh. Okay, and do that. Well, he's also Witchy's caddy. He's carrying all the magical post-it notes. Yeah. You done fucked up now. And how better to celebrate getting your post-it note-based magic back than by doing some magic without post-it notes? <laughs> Literally anything. Now that I think about it. So Woochie starts with a fire dancing and some teleportation, but soon works out that since it's a battle of ever-increasing escalation, he should just run with that. It's a Doctor Strange tactic, but ultimately quite effective. Though it does fall foul of the law of conservation of Woochies, where the overall effectiveness of the group is proportional to the number of Woochies in it. One Woochie is incredibly powerful, but 30 Woochies is a putty patrol. It's very nice of the villains to think of the film's already stretched budget and not use their far more expensive Wind in the Willows forms. Anyway, the battle is soon won through this clever little click shot. <laughs> Though that's just one of them. The other goblin is very slowly escaping. <laughs> Oof, not slowly enough though. The other goblin escapes too, and much faster, because an arrow embedded in his forehead missed all the important organs. <laughs> it figures that the only driver dumb enough to not avoid the magic battle wouldn't keep his fucking eyes in the road. So in the van that hit Woochie is the reincarnation of the rich widow from 500 years earlier. What a stroke of luck! <laughs> <laughs> Did you do a lot of crying when I wasn't paying attention? <laughs> so the widow is now the PA of the famous actress. Though to be fair with that name, I don't think she had much chance in any other career. Anyway, they speed off into the night, leaving Wuchi and Chiranji to deal with all the modern day crap. First, transport. 
지금부터 옛날 말로 치면 말입니다. 말. Honestly, I'm kind of disappointed he didn't just turn Charang into a bike, turbo teen style. Oh, wait, that's not them. He just swapped clothes with the bikers and went clubbing. Earlier, Wuchi was confused by a fucking building, but put him in a Devil May Cry outfit, and he fits in perfectly in a techno club. I'm not complaining, though. This lines up with my experience of guys in techno clubs. I put him in the right club, and he'll be Marilyn fucking Monroe! So Wuchi and the priest lesser god find one of the goblins hiding in the club's toilets. With her ability to turn into a giant rabbit, she'd also be a big hit in the right club, if she wasn't too busy dying to put up much of a fight. So she's quickly imprisoned, or whatever the fuck it is they do to the goblins. <laughs> That's one goblin down, one still running around, unhurt for the massive brain injury got in the fight. Anyway, Wuchi decides to trade up from his old wall hanging and live in a screensaver where he discovers that the bronze knife he was searching for is located in a museum. Mansion, or somewhere else that's heavily guarded. <laughs> now guards, goblin demons, and literal gods are one thing. Actually, actually it's three things. <laughs> I'll see myself out. And mince, and mince myself. Rub the feet up. Now guards, goblin demons, and literal gods are one thing, but Korean battle Mormons are something else. <laughs> As in their knuckles don't feel pain. No wonder they're not getting in, he could be describing Kim Il-sung. You know, I fucking hope there's a sequel where he tries to go home. <laughs> so they search for the knife. Maybe they should split up. They can do more damage that way. Okay, so what kind of Mickey Mouse operation stores priceless paintings that way? Mickey Mouse? We ain't even Betty Boo! <laughs> So two of the lesser gods are tired of all this bullshit, and finally, after minutes of complaining and wandering through a random crumbling industrial site, decide to summon Wuche. <laughs> oh great. <laughs> I like how that guy went from oh, dumbass doctors don't do anything, I won't die, to oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, I'm gonna die! Faster than an anti-vax who tripped off a hospital rooftop. Long story long, Wuchi finds the knife and they're summoned to save the two lesser gods from painful inconvenience. Which they do, and as a bonus, Wuchi even nabs the other goblin. <laughs> With both the goblins captured, all that's left is the arch god, who's not dead, but secretly pulling the levers of power, like he does. The three lesser gods don't know that though, because what they do know wouldn't fill that wheelbarrow that Wuchi chucks at them for trying to capture him again. <laughs> <laughs> Over at the church, the priest lesser god is really regretting his choice of career. Sure, it seemed convenient to be his own secretary, but now he has to deal with the public. A compound sin, a sin so complicated and multifaceted that it could have been committed by Heath Robinson! Or, for my American fans, Rube Goldberg. <sighs> anyway, the goblins are apparently Catholic because they really don't like listening in and breaking the sanctity confession. <laughs> no, only one's rattling, the other's rabbiting. <laughs> oh, fuck, the goblins are out of their gourd! <laughs> Oh, what damn it. I get that these three are dumbasses, but look at him. He has evil hair and an evil beard. Okay, he also looks like a disapproving dad in a soap opera, but they're usually evil too. So in short, they figure he's just been resurrected with a pompadour haircut for the ages. Almost literally. Anyway, with the Arch God's help, the lesser gods come to the genius conclusion that the goblins are working for Wuchi. Because he's so famous for having good luck with half-animal underlings and they were already causing trouble before he was released. So now that he thinks the goblins are dealt with, Wuchi decides to pick up where he and the young widow P.A. left off. <laughs> no, before that. 
내가 그 망나니 전우치다. No before that. Bad. Yep, right there. 그리고 왜 자꾸 내 앞에 나타나요? 약속했으니까. I mean, I assume he died a few dozen times since then, but I'm ready to start now. 아저씨 무슨 약 같은 거 하세요? Outside of late 80s Nintendo-based movies, what kind of wizard isn't? 네? <웃음> 내가 이런 거 삽니다. Michael Jackson? Yeah, Michael Jackson. He's talking about the man in advertising. He's asking him to make a change. You know, being a wizard in this universe is a lot of homework. Writing all the post-it notes you could ever need in every conceivable circumstance. Trying to make sense of the plot. No wonder Woochie hasn't got time to turn Tarangi into a real boy. So they're both going searching for the Arch God. Good thing he's keeping his evil on the down low by slaughtering a whole high-end restaurant before every meal. Oh, sorry, almost a whole high-end restaurant. Which apparently is even more evil. <laughs> But little things like mass murder go witchy over the main character's head. So to investigate what am, the arch god's location, he instead goes back to the vault where they found the knife, checks out a photo of him, tracks down one of the other powerful men in the photo, trashes his office, and asks him where he is. <laughs> this is so much more convenient than just following the bodies he's leaving in his wake. Fun too. <laughs> but the window already had that fun. Anyway, Tranji's efforts to find the arch got have gone well. He's got a job in the techno club, just in case he ever drops in by accident. <laughs> this is one of those times where my sarcasm was so successful it evolved into a prediction. Now, this reaction might not line up with what I said earlier about him going off to find the Arch God, but I suggest you take that up with the subtitles. <laughs> so the Arch God wants his help in killing Wuchi, and in exchange, he'll be made human. <laughs> or he can refuse and he'll just kill him. <laughs> oh, sorry, he'll do all that, which he might technically survive. <laughs> Hey, I didn't know this was a backdoor pilot for Kitty Saurus. So the Arch God uses his magic or something to make the reincarnated widow find Wuchi for him. Now, for those of you keeping a score, both Wuchi and the Arch God are searching for each other, but rather than follow the obvious trails left by the other, they instead track down their friends and get them to help out. Trust me on this, there are simpler ways to find your Arch Nemesis. The reincarnated widow plot is pretty simple, where evil eye shadow and attack her boss, the famous actress, in her Dari Argento set she lives in, injuring her leg and therefore taking a role in a big film she's halfway through filming, even though the widow's not an actress. Of course! Also, she might be possessed. Oh, wait a sec, which is a superhero now, Michael Jackson man. This is my city. There's blood on her dance floor. It's been years since she shamoned without fear. But she is not alone. I am her lover, her protector, her hee hee ha. Huh? I am bad. I am the smooth criminal. But most of all, I am the thriller. I will be there and I will heal the world. Anyway, because Witchy is really embracing his new calling, he can detect crimes now. In case of shoes break glass. These boots are made for jumping, and that's just what they'll do. Sooner or later, these boots will jump all over your car. <laughs> anyway, Tranji keeps up his part of the bargain. <laughs> but sidekicks are never through. Anyway, Tranji steals his post it, so he faces down the probably possessed widow he has to get creative. Talk about how hot she is and fall her into an obvious trap. <laughs> you fool, Taranji! That's the Arch God's evil twin, Black Wadam! Mine is an evil laugh. Anyway, that trap that the widow got Woochie to follow her into was here for some mortal fan back! Mortal fan back! Not a lot, though, it'll spoil the final battle, so have some music. <laughs> okay.
okay. I hate the fucking flute too, but that's a bit drastic. Anyway, she's not possessed anymore. You can tell because gravity's affecting her. <laughs> There is more of gravy than grave about you. That's my mascara. I cried all the way down. This is a reference to Witchy's master's earlier line, not that he's going to die fucking her. I mean, he might, but that will be a coincidence. Well, that's one way to spoil the mood. So it looks like Witchy's dead and the Arch God has the lesser gods who the cracked pipe. Which, if anything, is just going to get the film so high it loses track of time. And how have Witchy be still alive and writing his own underwater post-it notes? Mostly because that's apparently how magic works in this. And Chiranji is giving being a wizard a go. If it had more luck with fireballs if he dipped his testicles in kerosene. Long story, slightly shorter than the film, there's some more mortal fan bat. The lesser gods eventually work out the obvious, that the arch god's the villain, and everyone piles through a portal to the widow's film set for the epic final battle. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All he is is another dick in the wall. And a way more mortal fan bat! Mortal fan bat! Ah. I bet everyone standing nearby is steaming after that display. Dude, that's a kamikaze train and you're in Japanese occupied Korea. That should be the proper way to summon the divine wind. Well done, Wuchi. You defended yourself against the harmless one. So with Wuchi down, the three lesser gods, who kind of look like minor characters from an early Robert Rodriguez film, but that's not important right now. The three lesser gods try to get away with the pipe, but as ever, the Padasha Emperor Hwadam IV is the master of hot air. <laughs> Sucks for him that Chiranji is the master of fat Shang. Good boy. Of course, he'd be an even better boy if he didn't drop it a second later. <laughs> Still, 12 out of 10. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, Hwadam starts playing the pipe, upsetting the Mexican jumping gourds containing the goblins, and waking the Widow P.A. up. It turns out that Hwadam wasn't the Arch God, he's just some guy. Well, the Arch God, who was consumed by evil and fell to Earth, is actually her. The Arch God? Oh. The Arch God. It was a man. It's whatever it wants to be. <laughs> I have seen this film three times and each time it surprises me. Not because of memory problems or stupidity or memory problems or ever increasing problems with my memory, but because it makes no fucking sense. Every time I watch this, it seems clear to me that Hwadam is the Arch God, but nah, apparently not. He's just a middle-aged version of the villain in Versus. Well. Well, that's one way to defeat a villain and beautify an urban center at the same time. He looks a bit as sad and confused as I am. And with that stabbing, Padam's powers are quickly fading. I mean, he can't even hold his own in a primitive Doctor Strange, perspective shifting, wire through, jewel through time and space. It is really nifty how much of this film's action resembles later MCU stuff. And I have no idea if it was an influence or just a coincidence. Either way, cool. <laughs> Oh, fuck, they went too far back and turned the movie into a Mobius strap. Nah, it's a trick. Wadam is controlling the illusions of the Master and Chiranji to say the exact same stuff that he wasn't there to hear the first time around, and then hides in the luggage in the hope that Wood she won't randomly shoot at. <laughs> Getting 
fatally shot. How did you know that was my one weakness? And away in the most anticlimactic victory possible, he doesn't even let the lesser gods in which he finished defeating him, and just walks himself into a prison paint tank. We're winding down now, so time for the second random trans twist. Not only is Witchy's god trans, but so is his dog. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. Huh? Witchy the Demon Slayer says trans rights, trans wrongs, all the way from trans alpha to trans omega. Go on, my ears are burning. I wasn't talking about you. Well, it sure sounds like me. Anyway, now that she knows who she is, the Arch God gets down to business, adding a cross-dressing plot to that World War II film she's now the lead off, turning the rest of her pantheon into her personal staff, dating Wuchi, developing a mustache fetish, and hiding out in someone's holiday snaps. <laughs> there are worse ways for God to spend her time, such as watching this film. <laughs> I am really not a fan of this, it's over long, amusing in places, often nonsensical, but not in a good way. Parts were definitely clever and fun, but much more often it's just annoying or confusing. It doesn't work for me, but it might work for you. Now about the twist about the Arch God, I wasn't sure to handle this in the review because, like I said, I've seen this three times and every time it comes a surprise. And I don't think you're supposed to think that Wadam is the Arch God. He's just some guy who's more powerful than actual gods and spontaneously turned into a goblin for some reason. I don't know if the problem here is me, the translation, my lack of context for the cosmology depicted, which might not be accurate in a way, or something else. If you've seen the film, please let me know if you have the same issue. Anyway, I wasn't sure to handle this, give as accurate as possible information that I put together over multiple viewings, or explain my perception, wrong that it is, and then do a rug pull. And I'm still not sure if I handled it right. Apologies if I didn't. I'm Demon de Hog, and I have to live with it every day. One time when I had a laptop and I looked at some pornography and my pop pop found out and he um he took my laptop into the driveway and just ran over it with the car over and over and it really sucked because all of my poetry was on there too. <laughs> oh my gosh! What oh my happened? god! You <laughs> ran it over. Jesse, yeah. What happened to you? Yeah. And all your poetry was in there. Was it yeah. the sci-fi?